These are in-class notes on the questions from the study guide that we're going to go over as a class to get ready for our Unit 8 test. So let's talk first about numbers 1 through 4. The notes from last night was the refresher notes on bringing back our knowledge of domain restrictions. How did those notes go? Good. Good. Can we recap real quick what functions do not have a restriction? So I'll, I'll add them to the top. No restrictions. I'll give a hint. There's three. Linear, because linear functions look like a what? Um, line. Like, it has two arrows. A line, increasing or decreasing. If I come in from the left, I hit an arrow. Come in from the right, an arrow. So what would the domain of any linear function be? Negative infinity. Negative infinity to infinity. How else could you write this? Good. So there's three, two more functions that have all real numbers as their domain. Quadratics. quadratics. Why quadratics? What shape do those make? A U. And the only option is that that U would open up or down. But either way, if I come in from the left, arrow, come in from my arrow, no restrictions whatsoever on our domain, all real numbers. One more. Anybody remember? One more? Odd roots. Does anyone recall what their graphs look like from that video? Kind of like a squiggle V, a sideways S? Correct. All odd roots will have this shape. Do we have any restrictions from the left or the right? No. No. Very good. So that's a recap of quarter one knowledge that came back in our last assignment for what has no restrictions. The strategy that I recommended is if you have a set of questions where you're asked, to identify the domain, first look for what does not have a restriction. So number one through numbers one through four, do you see a question here that we don't actually have to do any work on? Yeah, number two. Why number two? Because it's an odd root. How does he know that it's an odd root? That little three. So what is the domain of this function? And if we were to ask for a reason, we would put odd root, and we are all done. Numbers one through four, which would you like to talk about first? Number four? Okay. What part of this function am I going to pay attention to? Just inside the radical. Just underneath the radical. So for those of you with a highlighter or circle, just what's underneath the radical. The negative up front does not affect the domain. That negative four does not affect the domain. Those are pieces that would affect the shape of the graph, but not what x values are okay or not okay. Remind me, what can I not take the even root of? A negative number. So we need to figure out what values of x would cause that to happen. So I take 12 minus 3x and I write what? 12 minus 3x equals 0? Less than or equal. Greater than or equal to 0. We're saying it has to be 0 or bigger. So now let's get our, our ninth grade solving skills going. What are we going to do first? Subtract 12 from both sides. So I like how when you were talking, you said x was great, um, negative 3x is greater than or equal to negative 12. And then we decided we need to divide by negative 3. Yeah. What, when you say it flips, what do you mean? The inequality sign will change directions. When we multiply or divide by a negative. What is negative 12 divided by negative 3? Positive 4. Is that my answer? No. The, to the no. complete answer? No. All numbers. It's part of it. We don't need to check for domain, but this is a piece of my statement. How do I actually state the domain? All real numbers. Good. For number one, what part of this do I pay attention to? 
What's under the radical? Which is what? What's underneath the radical? X minus 9? X plus 9. What inequality do I set up? Greater than or equal to 0. All right. The, the solving side of this is Algebra 1, so I'm just going to move through it. For those of us that were able to work on this first section last night, does our answer match for number one? Yeah. That's great. Let's make sure we're sitting up nice and tall right now in preparation for our test. Number three, what do I highlight? Yes, highlight 2x plus 16. Anybody have an extra pencil? So I take 2x plus 16 and I set it what? <coughs> Greater than or equal to 0. What would I do first to solve? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a question. That becomes 2x is greater than or equal to negative 16. Good. So this knowledge for 1 through 4 is prior knowledge, but it's coming back because we've been working with radicals with solving, so it makes sense for us to, to work on making a connection to graphing. Yes, question. So I saw you did something last night when, um, a number eight on the notes. How did you, why Good, so he's asking a question on number eight from last night's flip notes. Can I see it? Number eight from last night's notes was g of x equals x plus seven divided by five x plus 20. This will not be on the test, but it will be on the final, so it's a perfect opportunity for us to talk about it. Why does this function have a restriction? This was number eight from the type three. Or from, was that type two? From the flip notes, I'm sorry. From the flip notes last night. Why does this function have a restriction? can't divide by zero. Because x is present in the denominator, it means that there's some value of x that could make that happen, and that's not okay. So how are we going to figure out what value of x would make that denominator equal to zero? Yes, so we highlight our denominator because that's what we're focusing on. We're going to take 5x plus 20 and set it equal to 0, because that's what we're trying to figure out. What would make this equal 0? So let's solve this and figure it out. What will, what will I do first? Subtract 20 from both sides. 5x equals negative 20. Divide by 5. Divide by 5. x equals 4 or negative 4? Watch our negatives on the multiple choice section of the final. Very well, choice A could be all real numbers. By the way, how are we going to write this answer? X. How do you say cannot equal? What do I do here? Put a slash to the equal sign. Next, not equal to negative 4. So the reason I'm, I'm recommending we're cautious is that choice A could be all real numbers, X not equal to negative 4, and then choice B could be all real numbers, x not equal to a positive 4. The only difference would be the negative sign. So we want to watch for that, yes? But the reason why I say this is because last time you divided by a negative 5. I saw you divide by a negative 5 right there. So I'm like, why did you Oh, it's a typo form for negative? me. Thank you for bringing that up. All right, back to numbers 5 through 13. 10 and 13 didn't print correctly. So number 10 should be
Oh, now I can't see what it was. We'll get there in a sec. Let's run these through. So half of these technically qualify as some refresher ninth grade skills. Let's get going on them. Who has an answer to share for number five? Um, number five. So either share your answer from last night or let's work on it right now. 21 and 11. 21 and to the 11th. How did he get 21? He multiplied seven times three. And how about where did the 11 ends come from? Very good. So he just said that n to the 6th and n to the 4th get us n to the 10th. But we have one more n right there, which gets us n to the 11th. So new voice for number 6. What's my answer for number 6? 1 divided by x to the 3rd. Very good. New voice, number 7. 64 w to the 15. At any point, if there's a question, please stop me. We are in a review right now. So none of this is new learning. This is review. Wait, so what's the yes. So how many places were there to send that power? Two. Two. Eight. Who wants to contribute? New voice. Jeffrey. Very good. Five tenths simplifies to one half. X to the negative one needs to move to the denominator. Why does X to the negative one need to move? Because negative exponent. Very good. X to the tenth. The one half comes from simplifying five tenths. Good question. So, so we're working on talking about this. Her question is, is that 10 divided by 5? How do we read fractions when we're dividing? Do we start from the numerator or do we start from the denominator? Yes. Very good. So there's two ways of looking at this. One, we read from the numerator, 5 divided by 10. And then also, she picked up on, to simplify this, we can divide both the numerator and denominator by 5. And this becomes 5 divided by 5 is 1 half. Great question. Number 9, who's got it? New voice. Looking for what we're going to do first. You left yours here, here. I'm listening, guys. Who's got something for number nine? Jean, go for it. So let's talk about it. Gene, 3 to the 7th times 3 to the 8th. I have the same base. It should be at the end of the workbook. What do I do with the powers? Add them. What is 7 plus 8? So this becomes 3 to the 15th divided by 3 to the 12th. Same base. What do we do with the powers? Don't touch the base. Because this represents literally Seven threes. Right? And this represents how many? Eight of them. If you changed this base to be a nine, now you would be saying you're multiplying nines together. Are you multiplying nines together? No. So that's why the base has to stay three. Three to the 15th divided by three to the 12th. What do we do? Subtract. 15 minus 12 is three. Three to the third equals... 27. 
and I did one like three times. I did three times three. I got nine fifteen, and then over three twelve. Three times three is nine fifteen. I mean, three times three. I got the nine, and then the fifteen at the top. But I still got the same answer. Show me that after. Number ten. What are we gonna do? Um, bring it down. Bring the next. <coughs> what needs to move? The next. Both numbers. Does seven go up? And then Does this have a negative exponent? Yeah. Yes, has to move. Does this have a negative exponent? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So when I rewrite this so that I have positive exponents, what does it become? Seven squared. Okay, so now for those of us who have been quietly listening, you are turned to participate for 11 through uh, 13. We're not going to, I don't need us to do 13. I just need us to work through 11 and 12 before we move on. Who wants to help me out with 11? And I will be your partner on this if you need help. So, Shamar, let's talk through how you did what you just said. How does 12 18 reduce and how do you know that? Divide by 6. So, how many, so 12 divided by 6 is 2. 18 divided by 6 is 3. So we have 2 in the numerator, 3 in the denominator. Tell me what you can do with the x's in words. Good. I can do 8 minus 6 with the exponents, and I get what kind of 2? Positive 2. So x squared will stay in the numerator. And then how about the y's? And how many are left? Y to the ninth in the denominator. Very good. It's as far as we can go. Thank you. Number 12, new voice. Mm, heard from you. Justin, let's work this one out. Negative 9, 18. What can I do? Let's work on it together. What number divides into 9 and 18? Yes? Can you think of something bigger? I don't think six. There you go. How many times does nine fit into a negative nine? Yep. And if it's a negative nine, then it's negative one. Eighteen becomes... Shh. Justin's question. Go for it. Two. So let's get that on our paper first. So negative 9 18 has become negative 1 half. Justin, what, what am I going to do in the numerator next? Phone a friend. He needs a hint on what to do next, and then he's going to tell me once you help him out. Tell him. Don't tell me. Tell him. I'm listening. So th if I send this 3 to x to the third, that becomes x to what power? Very good. And y to the, yes. In the denominator, did we have anything to send in yet? Yes. Yes. So, Justin, did you hear what he said we're going to deal with next? Can you tell him again? So that negative exponent is going to have to move. Where is it going to go? Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can do this in one step. I already have how many x's in the numerator? Nine of them. How many are you bringing up? How many does that make total? You had nine. You're adding five more. That becomes how many? Fourteen. So this is now x to the fourteen. Can you help me out with the y's? How many y's are currently in the numerator? In the numerator. In the numerator, I have three. How many are in the denominator? Seven. So when we subtract those exponents, how many y's are left? 
four located where? You tell me. Are you sure? No. Top? Top? Yeah. Bottom? Well, let's think about this. What is three minus seven? Negative four. So technically, watch the screen. Technically, it's y to the negative four. But do we keep negative exponents? No. No. So as soon as I mentally say to myself, three minus seven is negative four, I right away know that those y's belong in the denominator so I can have a positive exponent. Nice job. That covers all of 8.1. That's fine. So the question was, if, do I have to put negative 1, or can I just say a negative? That would be fine, too. It represents negative 1. Structure. So this is purely rewriting. Who would like to work on 14? How do I write this? So it's a new page, so we are resetting our voice people choices. So as soon as you go, you're done for the page. Who's doing 14? Go ahead, Josh. Put what in parentheses? Mm -hmm. Very nice. Who's got 15? Oh, Tishin? The square root of x. Um, the Can you explain how you got that? Um, the the two in the denominator is the root, and the three is the power. So blast from the past. Denominator is my root. Numerator is my power. Your second option on how to write this? Um, we can have the power on the outside, or we can have it on the inside. inside. So square root of x, x to the third. Okay. The little notes we took right here are good to help us out with our evaluating. Evaluating is quick if we know how to read the math. Who's got 16? Two. Tell me how you would read that out loud. <coughs> Third root of eight, very good, which is? What is the third root of eight? Two. Who's got 17? 18? Raise your hand so that way we're, we're oh, I heard from you. Thank you. Hmm? I heard a question. New voices for 19 to 24. Gene, 19. Very good. Why no solution? Because of those parentheses, we're saying the negative sign would be outside or underneath the radical? Underneath. Is that okay? No. New voice for 20? Davion. How'd you get that? Cube root of 125 is 5. Squared is 25. Very nice. So he used the root first. Third root of 125 is 5. Squared is 25. New voice for 21. Richie. Very nice. Is he right? Yeah. I say very nice because I understand why he got it. So let's think about this. Negative exponents, can they stay? No. One third. So before we, before we actually evaluate, let's do some rearranging. Richie, where would this term move to? What stays in the numerator as a placeholder? Hold on, let him finish it. So this becomes 27 to what power in the denominator? Mm -hmm. One third. And our answer will be? Yes. 
Very good. New voice for 22. Go ahead, Jeffrey. How do you get that? Is he right? No. Can you raise your voice? He says 144 for number 22. Let's help him out. Let's let's check. Let's see if, if we're right or not. What's the third root of 729? All right, 23. New voice for 23? Or as a class? How do you get four? We got 64. We got 64? So I'm hearing four and 64. What do I do first? Square root of 16 is four. Raised to the third power is 64. 24 is a lot like 21. What has to happen first? That down. <laughs> I, I, what does bring the that down mean? Bring in the that down. <laughs> what stays in the numerator as a placeholder? One. One. What's now in the denominator? 32. 32. All right, so now let's work on that. One will stay in the numerator as a placeholder. How do I read this? Fifth root of 32 is 2 raised to the third power equals 1 eighth. All right. Nice. 20, if you want to listen to any of those again, you can listen to them on Google Classroom. Let's move into 25 to 30. What do you want to try first? New section, new voices. 25, on 25? Are we sending in three? I'm sending one okay, one third. How many places how many places do we need to send one third? Three. One, three. two, three. So this becomes five twelve to the one third. X to the nine thirds. Nine thirds. Y to the three thirds. Three thirds. New voice on what I would get from this. Go ahead. X to the Third. Well, we'll keep going. You're doing good. So nine divided by three is three. That's why we got x to the third. What is three divided by three? One. So what's right here? Why? If you choose to write the one, you could, or just write y. Nice job. Who's got twenty-six? <coughs> what are we gonna do with the exponents here? Can I subtract? Do I have the same bases? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So we can do 3 fifths minus 1 fifth. Why can I do my subtraction right away? The Common denominator. 27. Do I need common denominators in 27? No. No, why not? For multiplying. So who wants to do 27? Let's do it, face. So this is going to be W to the... Do it with me right now. This is what learning is all about. Very good. Ooh, where'd the base go? Where'd the base? You good? So we've distributed the exponent. Now let's see what we can do next. What do you see that you can do? Okay, this needs to move to the denominator. Yeah, 
What what about this term? That stays on the top, right? It does stay on top. Do you see anything you might be able to do with that? Jesus. Let me try it. It's unfair. Oh my god. I missed it. What did six twelfths become? So six twelfths can simplify to one half. Thank you to your friends for helping. And what does this become? Let her do it. Let her do it. Z to the what? If it was negative in the numerator and it moves to the denominator, what does it become? Mhm. Mm so z to the yes. Mhm. Good. Twenty-eight. Who's got it? Miss, I don't think so. I've done so much already. Miss, I got three x four y. Looking to hear from C J. Richie. David. Rosalina. Who wants to try it? Justin. <coughs> Josh, go for it. Mm -hmm. How many times? So 243 to the 1 fifth, yeah. x to the 20 divided by 5, and y to the 15 divided by 5 becomes... Nice start on that. Good. Who's got 29? I'm waiting. CJ, go for it. We do need to make the denominators the same because what are we going to do with the exponents? Nothing to distribute. Like, this is where I would have something to distribute. Product of powers, what do we ultimately want to do with the exponents? That's a dot. That's like a multiplication dot. I know. It's supposed to be a multiplication dot. Product of powers, ultimately, what do we want to do with the... But why? What do we want to do with the exponents? Add them. So I'm going to set up one-fourth plus four-thirds. Go ahead, CJ. Mm-hmm. What does this get me? Does that fraction simplify at all? No. Is that my answer? I can? 19, 12. No, okay. But is this my answer? X to the 19 twelfths. So that's a really nice assist for number 30. Who wants to try 30? Who's got 30? Yeah? Awesome. Glad he's going to go for 30. What are we going to do first? Very good. Why is she able to get two to the five thirds right away? That, but also mathematically, why can she do that right away? The bases are the same, but the fractions have common what? Denominators. So right away, I can do one plus four and get five. This is still divided by two to the seven halves. Good. Keep going. We don't touch the bases. Quotient property. The bases are the same. What will we do with their powers? True. Well, what, what do I want to do with them ultimately? 
add, subtract, multiply, divide, subtract them. So let me set that up for myself. Five, I know I can't do it yet, but five-thirds minus seven-halves. What common denominator will we work good? So to work towards six, what will you multiply this fraction by? And this one? Good. What does that get me? 10 six minus 21 six equals Eleven? Negative eleven? Six. Is that my answer? It's part of my answer, but how do I write my answer? Mm hmm Is that done? What will stay in the numerator as a placeholder? One divided by Correct. It cannot. It cannot have negative exponents. It has to move. Very good. Nice job. So I'm going to pause here in the class notes video. Hold on one second. Wait, 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 wait. If you're on the video, that's the bell for this, the class, but listen to what I'm about to say. So in class, we finished talking through number 30. Right now, it's D lunch for you guys. I'm going to complete the notes for 31 and on. So if you would like to stay for a working lunch, you can, and continue to ask questions on 31 through 30, uh, through 40. It will be on Google Classroom. I'm going to pause the video. I'll come back in just one second. <clears throat> to simplify for 31, we want to work with rational exponent notation instead of these radicals. So how can I rewrite this? This is number 31 on page 49. So how can I, parentheses, 25 raised to what power? Careful, not yet, to the 1 half because we have this square root first, then this is raised to the one-fourth. One what are we going to do next? What's our strategy going to be here? We have power of a power here. So what can we do with these two exponents? Multiply them. So on the inside, we still have 25x times y to the third, but now this is raised to the one, two times four is six, careful, one eighth. One eighth. What are we going to do with that power? Send it in. How many times? Three. So this will be 25 to the one eighth. What next? X to the one eighth. Y to the three. Y to the three eighths. Very good. Is that my final answer? No. What can what does this equal? Can we take the eighth root of twenty five? Without getting the decimal. Yeah. We're gonna get a decimal. Someone just to make a point, because someone may have tried this. If I had sent in one half, what is the square root of twenty five? Five. So I will t I will accept this, or depending on your approach, you may have gotten five to the one fourth. These are actually equivalent. I I'm fine with twenty five to the one eighth. But for somebody who maybe had sent in that one half instead, they would have five to the one fourth there. But as our answer, we'll leave twenty five to the one eighth, x to the one eighth, y to the three eighths. Because as of here, there's nothing else I can evaluate. For number 32, do I want to work with radical notation? Am I going to work with radical notation? No. 
So I take what's on the inside. What's on the inside right now? Good. None of that has changed. What is this going to be raised to? So one third. How many places do I have to send this power? One, two. This exponent applies to that entire piece. So this will become a thousand raised to what power? One third. And then what happens with this x minus four? What is three times one third? Three times one third becomes three divided by three, which equals one. So those actually cancel each other out. What if this had been one third times six? I would I would have a two there. Good. Uh, can I keep going on this? What is this value? How would you say this out loud? A thousand to one third. A thousand to one third. Or if I started here, third root of 1,000 is what? From your chart or from your brain? 10. So this becomes 10 times x minus 4? You could. This one wouldn't be bad. 10 x minus 40 would also be fine as an answer. How are we going to approach number 33? Let's factor it. How? How does this factor? x minus 5? times x minus 5. Careful. The reason I say careful is x minus 5, x plus 5, that comes from the difference of squares. That would come from this. All right. Notice, is 25 positive or negative? positive, so both signs either have to be negative or both have to be positive. In this case, they're both negative because what am I trying to add to? Um, what kind of 10? A negative 10. Good. What am I going to do next? How do I go from here? New voice. What do I do? Well, how many x minus 5s do I have here? Two. Two of them. So can I write this as x minus 5 all squared? But then the square root is like what power? One half. One half. So this is raised to the one half. Now what happens? It cancels out. Why? Why does it cancel out? One. Very good. One half times two equals one. Or you could see it that a square root and a square are opposite operations. What is left is my final answer. That's minus five. Good. And we're all done. So those three wrap up the 8.2 section of simplifying. What's left is solving. So let's get into solving. <coughs> Number 34, who wants to take a shot? We've got to get the 7 out of there. Okay, how is that going to happen? Uh, minus 7. Minus 7, minus seven from both sides. So there, there was a good question. Is that plus 7 underneath the radical? No. No. That is why we can subtract it. Equals 8. And then now you have to do the negative 2 on the left side. When you say do the negative 2 on the left side, what does that mean? Divide it. Divide both sides by negative 2. Good. Because what's happening here? What's happening with the negative 2 in this radical? What operation is happening right here? Multiply. Multiplication. What undoes multiplying? Good. Okay. So what's left on the left side? Uh, it would be the radical. The radical. Good. Third root of x minus 8. Yeah. And then that will be negative. Mm-hmm. Raise both sides. Raise both sides to the third power. 
the third root and third power cancel, leaving what behind on the left side? So, X Now you, um, you plus 8 by both sides to get the x by itself from the other position. Good. Does this require a check? Um, yeah, no. Um, yeah. yeah. It doesn't. Um, no, no check because it's our route. He's good. So if you forgot that, make yourself a note. Odd root, no check needed. There's no worries about negatives. We can take the odd root of a negative. So any value can be under there for X. 35, who wants it? This is the time to learn. Who wants to give it a shot? Emmanuel? The first oh no, just tell me out loud. You did hold on. Manuel then you'll do the next one. Manuel, you're gonna talk me through this? Yeah. Okay. And while he's talking it through, see if you can beat him on your papers to the next step. Keep going, eight plus five. Mm-hmm. This does represent one half, but I'm not going to raise it to the one half. I'm trying to cancel one half. So good, raise both sides to the second power, or square both sides. All right. The square root and the square cancels. Good. Mhm. Mm I would add seven. No, seven. Subtract seven. seven. Six. One sixty nine. Does that divide evenly? Is this my answer? It might be my answer. Why am I not sure? It's an even root, so we need to check it. So let's check. What am I plugging in for X? It's going to be 3 times 54. We'll use a calculator. 3 times 54 plus 7. Watch how I close the radical. I physically like kind of put a little mark at the end to tell me it's over because what's outside of the radical? Plus, I mean minus 5. Equals 8. eight. All right. Underneath the radical in your calculator, can you please do 3 times 54 plus 7? Mm-hmm. Notice the right side is going to stay 8 the whole time. What is the square root of 169? What is 13 minus 5? 8 equals 8. True or false? True. True, true, true. So my answer checks. Almost same question. Was there a question? 
right. Who's got 36? Can I get a new voice? He's helped me out with one. Part participating is learning. You got it? It's okay. That's what we're here for today. So right now, if I put a line on my ankle sign, I have rad a radical on both sides. How am I going to take care of that? What can I do to both sides right now? Hold on. Yes, very good. We're going to raise both sides to the fifth power. As, because these are, I'm trying to get rid of the fifth root. So I raise it to the fifth power. What happens right away? What's left on the left side? And what's on the right side? And from here, we're back to our ninth grade solving skills. So what are we going to do first? <laughs> Careful. Can I combine like terms across this line? No. Would I add 11? Hold that question for a second. This is a positive 11, so we'll subtract 11. So now I have 6x equals 5x minus 10. Now what? Yep. So we're getting x to one side, numbers to the other. So we get x equals... Does this require a check? Why or why not? Odd root does not. So she asked a really, Kadea asked a good question. Do we need to get it set equal to zero? That comes into play when we hit something with quadratics. With a quadratic, we need it to get set equal to zero. Here, variables on both sides, get x to one side, all your numbers to the right. We're going to get to one just like that soon. Great question. Yes. Oh, you mean that like one side was a fifth root and one side was a fourth root? Yeah. That's a great question. We don't do that in, in here, but I can show you what that would look like. You'd actually have to commit to getting one of them to cancel because only one would cancel, right? Because you have to do the same thing to both sides. And then you'd still, his question was if one side was a fifth root and one side was a fourth root, you would have to commit to either getting the fifth root or the fourth root to cancel and still have to work with the other radical as part of your solving. Here, we're, we're only working with ones where they're the same. So that being said, who wants to try 37? Go for it. Okay. Raised to what power? Very good. So the a two or the second power. The reason why we didn't try to do anything with this three is that I, this three on the outside is I have a radical on both sides. If I had actually had a numerical, that just a number over here, I would have divided both sides by three. But I've got radical on both sides, so I go straight to eliminating the radical, in this case by squaring both sides. Keep going. How many places are there to send that two? Because we're un uh, the question is why are we putting a two? We're undoing a square root. Good question. We got two places to send that power, so it's going to become three squared, which is what? Nine. Nine. If you want to write three squared first, you can. Are we okay just saying nine? Yeah. Three squared becomes nine. The square root of x squared it leaves you with what? Just x. Oh, careful. What happens with the square and the square root? They cancel each other out, leaving what behind? Right. So nothing under the radical changes. The, the action of squaring the square root, the square cancels with the square root, leaving what was underneath now free of a radical sign. Is this quadratic? No. No, this is still just our 
other solving method of gathering x's, all the variables to one side, numbers to the other. So what needs to move? Subtract 8. Just 8. Subtract 8x from both sides. Okay. Yes, we have to check. Why do we need to check? Even roots. Let's do a check. We're going to plug into our original equation. So this becomes 3 times the square root of negative 5 equals the square root of 8 times negative 5 minus 5. Anybody see a problem? Where is the problem? Can you take the square root of a negative? Did you have any, we crossed this one out, did you have any other answer to check? So there could definitely be questions on Monday where it's one like this and it's a multiple choice and it's an even root, you get an answer and it actually doesn't work out. But if you forget to do the check, what are you going to think is the answer? No, if you didn't do the check, what would you think is the answer? <laughs> right. And you would get it wrong just because you forgot to do your check. So if it's an even root, we have to remember to check. Very good. 38. Who's going to take on 38? New voice. I've heard from both of those guys. Somebody else. Come on, guys. Sharing is caring. Let's do it. Quickly. So let's take a look. Is this radical by itself? Oh, no. Well, see how this radical, is there anything in front or after being added or subtracted? No. So we go straight to clearing the radical. We're going to do that by raising both sides to what power? Very good. What happens on the left side, DeAndre? Mm, phone a friend. What happens on the left? Ask somebody. Try again. Phone a friend. Cancels. Leaving what behind? And now let's address that. On the right side, do we distribute in this too? Do we distribute in the two? Ah, good answer. Why? What does this actually mean? X minus three twice. This is a key step. If we don't remember this, the question's going to go nowhere. Yeah? So, DeAndre, pick it up from here. We'll leave this X minus three alone for a second. What are we going to do on the right side? How are we going to work this out? And again, if you're working on this one right now, try to stay a step ahead of him. What is he about to tell me to do? Well, we 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 got to use what? Uh, yes, we have to distribute. So let's see what this is. What is x times x? X squared. X, squared. x times negative three. Negative three x. Negative 3 times x, negative 3x. What kind of 9? Positive 9. What can I still do here on this right side? So leave x minus 3 here for now. Combine what like terms? Yep. So I get x squared minus 6x plus 9. Do we have a quadratic? Yes. So coming full circle to Kadea's question about five minutes ago, what's our strategy going to be? Get one side to zero. Very good. So logically, what may, what, which side are we going to get set equal to zero? The left. the left side. Left to move, right? So what are we going to do? You tell me. DeAndre, back to you. This is still your question. I need to get this side set equal to zero. So how are we going to make that happen? 
we'll add three. Where does it make sense to add three to over here? Mm -hmm. At the same time, can we move X as well? Yes. What's the opposite of a positive X? Minus. If I subtract X here, where does it make sense to write minus? <coughs> Good. Line up those like terms, setting ourselves up for success. X minus X is zero. Negative three plus three is zero. So the entire left side is now zero. What do I have on the right side? Minus 7x. Very nice. Not yet. What do we do now? We're still trying to solve. Starts with an F. What are we going to do? Starts with an F. Factor. Factor. So I'm looking for factors of 12 that add to negative 7. So this is an A is 1. I'm hearing 3 and 4. Or 4 and 3. Same thing. Now, if C is positive, both factors are what? Or both factors are what? Both are negative or both positive? To add to a negative 7, I need them both to be negative. negative. So how do I write these factors? It's going to be x minus 4 and x minus 3. Mm -hmm. If I wrote x minus 3 first and then x minus 4, is that the same thing? Yeah. Okay. So we factored it, but I still don't have answers. What's next? <coughs> Very nice. Set each factor equal to 0. So, DeAndre, what answers do I get from this first factor? X, yep, add four to both sides. X equals positive four. Are these my answers? We need to check because this is a even root. So let's see. Space down there is a little rough. I'm going to do the checks up here. The checks won't take too much space. So let's check 4 first. So what am I going to write for the check? Square root of 4 minus 3 equals 4 minus 3. The goal is that the left will simplify to equal the right. What happens on the left side? Square root of 1 equals 1. What is the square root of 1? 1 equals 1, true. So this one's good. This one checked out. Now let's check out x equals 3. So what do I write for that check? Mm -hmm. Under the radical, what is 3 minus 3? Okay. On the right side, what's 3 minus 3? What is the square root of 0? 0 equals 0? True. True. Both answers checked out. If one of these had failed, would the whole question be no solution? No, because you still have the other one that did work, that did check. So it's only if both of these failed would that have been a no solution. Very good. Charlie's got 39. Very good. We're going to add x to both sides. We're working to isolate that radical. The radical, yep, bring that down. So negative 5x, the square root of negative 5x plus 6 equals 6 plus x. Is that 7? So isn't x like 1? x isn't 1. We don't know what x is. We're actually solving for x. Is 6 plus x is 6x? If we say 6x, that means 6 times x. Addition doesn't become multiplication. So say this out loud. That's exactly what you're going to write. Or x plus 6, whichever you choose. These are not like terms. So those of you who are thinking 7, it's because for some reason, I'm not sure where it happened, but people think that this is automatically 1. It's not. We don't know what it is. We're solving for it. Like here, we didn't know what x was, and what did x end up being by the time we were done solving? 4 and 3. We don't know what x is until we find it. x and 6 are not like terms, so we just need to write x plus 6. Keep going. Put parentheses, yep. 
Good. Square both sides. Good job. Mm -hmm. Distribute, yes, good. <clears throat> do we do anything over here yet? No, so just leave that alone. What happens when we distribute? Go for it. Very good. We just distributed. Now what? Combine like terms. Yes. Get one side equal to zero. So how are you going to make that happen? Where does it make sense to write minus six over here? Mm -hmm. Just plus five? <coughs> Plus 5x, plus 5x under, I heard that right under the 12x, that's good. What happens on the left side? Cancels out to zero, because each of those equals zero. And now I've got x squared plus 17x plus 30. Good. Do you want to keep finish it or you want to pass it on to somebody? Who's she going to pass this on to? Four. Emmanuel, how are we going to factor this? Factors of 30 that add to 17. If somebody can think of those factors. What you got? 15 and 2. Very good. So this will factor to be X plus 15. X plus, two. X plus 2. I set up my two little equations. X plus 15 equals 0. X plus 2 equals 0. What values of X do we get for answer? Negative X equals negative 15. And are these my answers? Have to check. We don't know. So let's do our checks. Underneath, we've got like some vertical space underneath. Help me out because I can't see it. So you tell me what to write for the check for negative 15. Mm -hmm. Still right here? Mm-hmm. All right, so this right side will stay 6 the whole time. The goal is to see if the left will come out to equal the right. Use your calculator to find negative 5 times negative 15 plus 6, please. In your calculator, negative 5 times negative 15 plus 6. So this becomes the square root of 81. Negative, negative becomes a, just checking that. Okay. Square root of 81? 9. 9 plus 15 equals 6. True? This comes out to be 24 equals 6. True or false? False. All right, so this one's out. Let's check. Negative 2. You do yours, I'll do mine, and we'll compare.
How'd your check come out? Six equals six. Is that true? Yes, it is. So we reject negative 15. That came out false. Our answer is negative two. Very nice. Number 40, last one. Who wants to go for it? And us? Go for number 40? Let's do it. What are we going to rate both sides to? Third power? All right. Mm -hmm. Do we have a quadratic? Is this a quadratic? Yes. So we need to get one side equal to zero. How are we going to make that happen? Good. Is that x that you just subtracted like terms with anything on this side? No. No. So tell me what to write. Minus x minus 20. What can I now do with that quadratic? Factor. So I'm looking for factors of negative 20 that add to what invisible number is right here? Factors of negative 20 that add to negative 1. 5 and 4 where what is negative? Negative 5. So I've got x minus 5 times x plus 4 equals 0. Now what? What answers do we get for x? Five. Are these my answers? Yeah. Am I done? No. How would I know if I'm done? It's an odd root. So we've now covered all questions in the study guide. The best way for you to study is to take some, a separate piece of paper, rewrite the question, put your workbook away, which we can do right now, get a separate piece of paper, rewrite a question and try it no notes or if you have any blanks on practices or in the type three go try those solving questions right now all right folks this will be posted on google classroom when is our test Monday. how are you going to study rewrite questions on a blank piece of paper and try them again study 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 bye